In the last couple episodes, we visited gas stations and giant truck stops from Ontario, Canada, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Walcott, Iowa, and Milwaukee, Wisconsin. But I received so many comments from many, many subscribers to visit this ginormous gas station in New Braunfels, Texas called Bucky's, which just happens to be the largest gas station in the world. So once again, I bought a ticket to fly out of Toronto, head on down to Austin, Texas, rent a car and drive to New Braunfels to check out this gas station called Bucky's. The Tiguan Trespasser had to leave the Tiguan at home this time. Not sure why he seemed so excited to go to gas stations though, especially for food. Funny how he saw this as being exactly what his channel needed. Maybe this is where all the deadbeat folks who ran away from their family obligations went. Honey, I'm going to the gas station to get milk. I'll be right back. Only they were never heard from again. All right, we have made it to Bucky's, the largest gas station in the world, and it's right behind me. All the pumps are right there, and uh, I'm gonna go in and grab breakfast. Uh, one of the things I didn't anticipate was the cold weather. You're thinking Texas is supposed to be a, a hot state, but it's like plus four degrees. I'm not sure what that is in, in Fahrenheit. It's probably like 40. Let's go in there, grab some food, come back here, and eat it with you guys. Are you ready? Let's go check out this bucket. Well, you have your coat on. Yes. Oh, do I? How did that happen? Because it's cold out? Yes. Yes. It is. It's a bit nipply out. I mean nippy out. <laughs> what did I say? Nipple? <laughs> Uh, there is a nip in the air, though. Is it just me, or does Ken's voice sound weird here? It comes off as being lethargic and unenthusiastic in nature. It feels as if he would rather not have to be bothered to do anything today. If Bucky's had a drive through I could almost guarantee he would use that after he did the short inside tour. I believe he admitted that he never did get permission to film inside Bucky's, though. Lots of people here. Pretty entertaining here, but. Uh... Oh, so Ken admits right in the video that they aren't allowed to videotape in there. But what does he do? He just keeps on recording, anyways. Meanwhile, he shows many other customers who may not agree to be on his YouTube channel. World famous washrooms. Surprise Ken didn't go in there and film. I mean, he was loitering around the showers at a truck stop and had to show us footage inside of one of those as he bathed himself. Guess he didn't want to show us how to toe tap in a bathroom. It's all the coffee stuff. Dark roast, house blend. Let's go for a medium, and then we'll do this house, Bucky's house blend. Let's need some room for some stuff. Here's the stuff for your coffee. That's why I get a sugar, and we've got all these different creamers. You can even pour your sugar. I think I'll do that instead. I'm not going anywhere. One size fits all, maybe, yep. All right, so let's do half and half. Don't any flavors today. Double, double. Loading up the coffee you are going to review with unmeasured sugar and a bunch of cream really lets you give a true review of coffee. As a non-coffee drinker, even I know this. It would be like wanting to review water, but first adding a bunch of flavoring to it. Totally defeats the purpose. I need to try this coffee first. I really, really need a coffee. Hmm. 
Bucky's House Blend, not bad. I saw a, a sign up above saying something about Costa Rica, and I love Costa Rican coffee, and I'm hoping that this is, their house blend is from Costa Rica coffee beans. It does taste good, I enjoyed that. I'm sure if Ken was given some crappy coffee and some top of the line stuff, and loaded them both up with the same amount of sugar and cream, he wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Chances are he would likely pick the shitty coffee given his unintelligent taste buds and seem to just love heavily processed crap. All right, let's get out the the, egg, the ham, egg, and cheese croissant. It's not your regular typical C-shaped croissant. It's like almost like a bun. Let's eat. It is funny how he seems to break out these fake accents when saying certain words. He put on a mild French one when he said croissant there. I find this perhaps more amusing than one should. I think he must do this with French words to play up the fact he is a Canadian in America eating in this case a croissant. Mm. I timed it and that was just over one second from the moment the food touched his tongue to him making his first groan signifying he was liking what shit he has just put in there. No one with any common sense can make an informed decision that quickly. I don't quite understand why Ken rushes to judgment. As I bit through that croissant, the butter uh, flavor came through with a kick. And then, of course, you've got that egg and then the ham. How do you know the croissant was made with butter, though, Ken, and not just margarine? Many places like that would use the margarine as it is cheaper. I'm doubtful it was butter. Mmm. Yeah, I'd buy that again, no problem. That's a lot of egg. Yeah, you'd probably need just this and a coffee and you're done till lunch. Uh, I finally got to the cheese. It's way over here. I don't know how it moved but it moved. Next up is the Rhino Taco. It is huge. Oh, it smells good though. Wow. Guess he was too lazy to put an ooh la la in there. Mm. Once again, a rush to judgment being made by Ken. Again, I will ask why. At least take a couple bites before giving your approval rather than immediately giving it away that you love it. Granted, half the time he exclaims he knows something is or will be good before even trying it, which as I previously stated, takes away any shred of credibility he might otherwise have. All right, last up is the brisket and egg taco. This one is quite small compared to the other one. Likely due to the fact it has brisket in it, which is not cheap, and it likely has less overall ingredients. See, Ken, again, certain things cost more money. Why do you think a junior chicken is $2.49 and a mick chicken is over $6? It is due to ingredients, portion size, etc. If you guys live in Texas or have been to Texas, let me know what your go-to breakfast item here at Bucky's is. It almost looks like a crepe. It has like that crepe look. Let's do it. Mmm. Okay, so perhaps Ken gives immediate approval to the cheaper items that are larger in size. He was slower to react to this one, likely due to his disapproval with it being small. Remember at Rudy's when he complained that their $6 cheeseburger was not worth it as it seemed smaller than a Big Mac? A Big Mac is around $7 now, is heavily processed, but because it seems bigger to Ken, he feels it is much better as far as bargain. Thus, he approves of it. Ken is clearly all about quantity over quality as opposed to quality over quantity, even if the price point is more or less on par. 
It took a second, but then the, the flavor of that brisket, the smoked brisket, that's my favorite. Brisket for breakfast. Let's do another bite and make sure it's as good as the first bite. See, Ken, this is how you should be reviewing something, but you don't. This is the absurd part. You know, but you choose not to do it anyways. And yes, it is. The brisket is very flavorful, juicy, and that smoke flavor is coming through with a kick. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to finish this uh, taco. Let's go for another bite. Never thought I'd be eating brisket for breakfast, but I'm enjoying it. I'm sure you polished off the other items too. Ken doesn't like to let food go to waste and his girth would be evidence of that. See, I've said he has lost some weight, however, he won't prove just how much. He also goes on about it in a totally unhealthy way. I've watched Dr. Eckberg's videos and the only part that Ken seems to follow is fasting. Nowhere in those videos does it say it is ideal to break your fast by eating copious amounts of fast food. All right, all done my breakfast. Baby all done. Baby all done. Baby all done. Baby all done. Before one ninety four. Seven thirteen. Let's check this out. I skipped through Ken ordering on the self serve kiosks and showing us around the store some more, as it is pointless footage. However, in typical fashion, he puts his basket on the pickup counter, then he steps to the side just to take time to look at the food blocking the pickup area. How rude is that? He thinks of no one else but himself when he does shit like that. Ken is the reason why Canadians are beginning to not be as popular around the globe as travelers because some bad apples give us a bad name for their poor manners. <laughs> Which is this grilled cheese. Nice little Bucky's wrapped bag. That doesn't look like a bag to me on that sandwich. Appears to be branded parchment paper if I were to wager a guess. Not nitpicking, just sort of correcting I guess. Then we've got a huge bucket of ketchup, which is quite, quite a bit, quite a bit of ketchup. All right, let's see if they're right about their grilled cheeses. They're cheap. Look at that. So it's wrapped once, wrapped twice. Let's pull that apart. See if they've got the cheese pull. Oh, almost. Almost cheese pull. That was a cheese pull fail. Enough with the cheese pull, princess. It is old and lame and boring. Just let it die and move on to something else. Let's dip that perfectly grilled sandwich into our ketchup. Mmm. I love grilled cheese sandwiches. That is as good or better than I make at home. So clearly it is better than what you make. That is the takeaway I am going with from your statement, Ken. That's one of the only things I can make. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's ample amount of cheese in there. It is tasting lovely. As everyone knows, American cheese is by far one of the most delectable fake cheese products on the market today. It is why many countries turn up their noses as they simply cannot stand just how popular it is. Who needs cheddar or brie? or Parmesan when you have Kraft Singles. I'm sure that would have paired nicely with some canned wine that Bucky sells. Another dip. Very nice. 
Let's try a couple of these potato tots. Ken still has trouble with eating with his mouth closed. Also, potato tots? Don't think I've ever heard people call them that. Tater tots, sure. Potatoes, ketchup, perfect. Yeah. That's a lot of tots right there. And the fact that they're free and you get that many for $3.99 for the sandwich and the tots. Another perfectly acceptable lunch. It was actually $3.18 for the grilled cheese and tater tots. The tots weren't free, as you still had to buy the sandwich. Not sure why the dim-witted are so easily fooled by that scheme. Finally, that is a rather poor lunch. Fried potatoes, white bread covered in butter or margarine with some processed cheese slices melted between them, carbs and fat. Totally a phenomenally phenomenal meal if you are looking to expand your waistline. Next, let's check out this chop barbecue a brisket beef sandwich. I guess you can get the chunk kind or chop. No shit, Sherlock. No shit, Sherlock. No shit, Sherlock. No shit, Sherlock. So, look at that. So that is all chopped up nice and fine. You don't have to do a whole lot of work on this one, except not letting it fall all over your nice shirt. What? Nice shirt. And there it is! Nice shirt. Kiss my ass! What? What are you looking at? What, do you like what you see? Yeah, that's right, eyes to yourself. I don't swing that way. I'm a real man. <laughs> What's so funny? Your shirt. Oh, it smells so good. Smoky meat. Mmm. Mmm. Just the right amount of barbecue sauce. I'm gonna do another bite of that. Mmm. You gotta love brisket. It's un unbelievable. You can't make me do anything! Why do we have to love brisket, Ken? What if someone were a vegetarian? He doesn't eat meat. He don't eat no meat? No, he doesn't eat meat. What do you mean he don't eat no meat? I saw them making more sandwiches with chunks of um, brisket and I think I'd probably prefer that over oh, this is almost this is almost like pulled pork you know what I mean it has that whole texture thing of pulled pork no shit Sherlock no shit Sherlock no shit Sherlock No shit, Sherlock. But it is good. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'd prefer the chunks over this one. We get it. You prefer chunks over chopped. You didn't need to exclaim it numerous times, Ken. Next up, let's try the barbecue turkey sandwich. One thing I didn't notice when I picked it up it says pickles and onions, so maybe there's like uh, several different versions of the same sandwich. So it's a barbecue turkey sandwich, but ones will have no pickles and onions on it, I'm guessing. Uh, I saw that they had several spots, but uh, it was all empty except for the far right one. So maybe this is the one that people don't, don't like as much because the other slots were all empty. There was two slots. 
One that says pickles and onions, and one that shows it without. Guess two is several now in Ken's head. And this was the only one that was left. Oh, there we go. Look at that fresh, juicy turkey with a little bit of sauce on there. Barbecue sauce. And I'm pretty sure on this side, yeah, there we go. We got the pickles, onions, and more sauce. All right, let's do this. Mmm. That is a good sandwich. Wow. This is definitely better than the chopped brisket sandwich, but it would be interesting to compare their chunk brisket to this chunky turkey sandwich. Uh, I don't know. I just, I just, this is definitely tasting better than the, the brisket sandwich. We get it. You didn't care for your choice of the chopped brisket. Move on, man. This is wonderful. I'm not minding the, the, um, pickles on there. I might, if I saw them making it, maybe ask them to only put uh, barbecue sauce on one side because it's almost a little bit too much barbecue sauce for the turkey. It's overpowering the turkey and the turkey is lovely all by itself. Lovely. Wow and amazing are the three go-to words that Ken uses to express his love for something. You'd think with the English language that he could learn to evolve and expand his vocabulary, but that isn't the Ken Domic way. You don't need twice the sauce. Yep, this is killer, guys. I love this thing. Wow. Let's try these cashews as part of our dessert. So this is the, I guess it's kind of like beer nuts, but they do it with uh, cashews and almonds. Mmm. Has a little bit of um, cinnamon flavor to it, for sure. I'm not sure if you've had beer nuts before, but they're very similar. It's a uh, sweet, nice flavor. A lot of fun to eat. Sweet, nice flavor, a lot of fun to eat. Wasn't that the most phenomenal way to describe the item, everyone? If you couldn't see what he was eating and it was not mentioned, would you have ever guessed it was essentially a beer nut based on sweet, nice flavor, a lot of fun to eat? I know one thing that is sweet has nice flavor, usually, and is a lot of fun to eat. But we all know Ken ain't getting any of that. <laughs> oh! Sick burn. Oh, no stop. sick burn, bro. Sick burn. Yeah, next time you're in Bucky, grab one of these. I want to do this banana pudding last. So let's do these beaver nuggets. They're like a corn treat. So there is a close up of a beaver nugget. At first, it tastes like I'm eating um, caramel corn. She said I had a Captain Crunch and sugar, sugar pops kind of taste to it. Forgetful Ken, earlier you said corn pops. What the hell is a sugar pops? All right, last but not least, our banana pudding. And the second I saw these was, was the second I knew I was gonna buy one. I can't wait to try the other ones that they have. We'll do them for dinner. Let's just do it. And we got some whipped cream on the top. Mmm. I like that a lot. I like it a lot. Quick, 
Better get Jim Carrey on the line for copyright infringement and impersonation. Although, honestly, that was the weakest Jim Carrey I've ever seen. I'd wager Ken doesn't know what good banana pudding is supposed to be. Also, why does he need to have whipped cream all over his lips off on the first bite? Also, how come he had a spoon for this trip, but back home for months he was still using plastic ones in his own damn car? Yep, there's chunks of banana in there as well. I guess I'll say it right now, uh, this Bucky's pudding is, I uh, go out and get it now. And next time, next time you're out of Bucky's, grab the banana uh, pie in, in a cup. Pie. Again. He caught me. Put pie. <laughs> this is the best night of my life. <laughs> yep, I was right. Grab the banana pie in a cup. That is definitely banana pie and not banana pudding. Anyone got a couple pennies laying around as Ken has no sense. Mmm. It's making me excited for dinner, let me tell you, because I can't wait to try those other ones. Cheers. All right, guys, we are all done that fantastic lunch here at Bucky's. Baby all done. Baby all done. Baby all done. Baby all done. Let's order the chicken and chicken. Uh, Let's do both. Extra toast, no. Extra gravy, no. That's not great. Is that gravy? No. Done. How many do you like? One. Uh, return to order, because I want to order their fish taco. It's new. No, I don't want any extra. Uh, you can ask for, yeah, no cabbage, no pico de gallo, no sauce, no lime, but I want all of it. Next. I would like to add an apple pie, not today. Back to order. I want to. I think I want to try their hot dog. They have a Texan dog, and that's got Texas chili and stuff on it. The one. No thanks. Complete order. So all right. So we've got three things on there. Cool. Now I'm just gonna get a dessert. And there is the coconut pie. Make sure it says coconut. And then I think I'm going to have to try this key lime, guys. Key lime pie. And I need to get a drink. We've got to pay attention to our number, which is 988. So here are the drinks. Like 59 cents for a medium, large, extra large. Like, holy cow. Yes, I don't want anything crazy big. Styrofoam. Bucky's. Come on. Kenny, come on. You know damn well you don't give a shit about the environment. Trying to give companies shit over it just makes you look asinine. You only do this to try and make yourself look better in the eyes of your audience as you know the amount of single-use containers you put into the landfill is beyond ridiculous compared to everyone else. Then Bucky's has all these flavors. Strawberry, blood orange, watermelon, water, fruit punch, pina colada, grape, strawberry, uh, lemon, lime. I want to do this pina colada. That tastes great. I don't need a full drink, guys. Once again, saying you bet something tastes great before you even give it a shot. Also, it's cute that you tell us you don't need a full drink. I'll remember that the next time you complain when you feel you were not given a full serving of something at a fast food place. We'll put that on there. We'll grab a straw. Put that in there. Hopefully it stays nice. I'm going to grab napkins this time. Let's go wait for our number. See, if you give a shit about the environment, you could have forgone the straw and just drank from the cup. Or would you have complained that your two fees would have gotten cold? 
Napkins are made from trees, and we rely on trees to clean the air for us. Again, wasteful. We also have these chocolate cake balls. I think I should try those. Came back over here because I realized they had all three of them bundled, all ready to go. Yeah, let's just do that. Fine, sir. Thank you very much. Actually, I'm going to grab a water. You can sort of the water. Grab another one of these big ones. Thirsty boy. All right, how are you doing? Good. Good. Lots of stuff. All right, thank you. All right, people, let's eat. All right, we're all set up. So much for Ken reusing the plastic bag. As you can see, a couple of them littered around the car. See, he is a champion of the environment, everybody. This is all wrong. I shouldn't be up here. I should be back in school on the other side of the ocean. Yet, you all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. And yet, I'm one of the lucky ones. People are suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction. And all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? For more than 30 years, the science has been crystal clear. How dare you continue to look away and come here saying that you're doing enough when the politics and solutions needed are still nowhere in sight. You say you hear us and that you understand the urgency. But no matter how sad and angry I am, I do not want to believe that. Because if you really understood the situation and still kept on failing to act, then you would be evil, and that I refuse to believe. Uh, here are all my dessert items. We're going to put that off to the side to give me some room. Then we'll grab these as we need them. We've got our fish taco. So it is folded like a taco, I suppose, to rolled. Like some of those other things in there are kind of rolled. And uh, they almost look like little burritos as opposed to tacos. Cheers. That's good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Ken, you amaze us with your mediocrity in describing your dining delight. That's really good. Wow, that sauce. That's what hit me first. It's a nice uh, toasted flour tortilla, but the sauce inside, that's really good. I'm gonna have to do it another way. I don't know what it is, but there's probably like a billion birds flying around my car. Not because of the food. Get a shot of that. They all were just swooped. Mmm, that's really good, man. Another favorite item I've just discovered. It's new, so any of you Texans haven't been to Bucky's in a while. Fish, taco, get it. So go out and get it now. Now it's time to try Bucky's pina colada drink. Yeah, it's carbonated pina colada. No aftertaste, which is good. Bucky's, you guys definitely put a lot of work into your food. Thank you.
try this Texan dog. The messiest thing. Uh, this would be a would not recommend eating in your car. Chili Texan dog from Bucky's. That's really good, man. Gotta love his exaggerated overacting. I thought his eyes were going to shoot out of his skull thanks to that hot dog. Nice juicy dog. The Texas chili is wonderful. The savory chips and crunch on top with that texture. And then the, and then the um, onions. Ken, you really need to learn another word to give savory a rest. Everything is savory, 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 savory. I swear you have put the word savory into slavery. Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. What an awesome combination. I need to do another bite. Wow. I'm glad I went with this instead of a regular dog. That was fantastic. Canned chili, Frito chips, some onions, cheese on a processed tube of meat. Yep, that is some fantastic quality food right there as a middle-aged man with grease dripping down his lip and a mouth full of food says so. Ken has no idea what fantastic food is. <laughs> Let's try their gravy. Oh, that's why. It's like a sawmill kind of gravy. It's not your regular typical gravy. I'm looking forward to like a nice beef or chicken gravy to dip my fries into. The screen showed you what the gravy was going to look like. This one is on you. Knowing you, you likely assumed it was a photo of ranch dressing or something. <laughs> Passive aggressive Ken has to have his little sulking outrage moment though. Let's dip that. Oh, oh, oh do you see that? Dunk. Oh, oh almost. I wouldn't have dunked this in like a, the other kind of gravy, but this gravy is, I guess it works out. Yikes. We got a partial projectile sighting there. One reason I keep telling him he should wait to talk about the food, but he doesn't listen to me. So instead, we get these RPSs, regurgitated projectile sightings. kind of a bland gravy it's not very savory if ken ever writes an autobiography i think he should call it ken domic phenomenally tangy and amazingly unsavory not not a whole lot of flavor in that no, it's not really adding anything sorry we have to go in close, as this was one of the most egregious open mouth chewing bits I've seen in a while. He made no attempt to chew with his mouth closed. Why, Ken? Why?
the first bite, I liked it for a second. And then I'd rather just eat the chicken straight up than put this on it. Let's dip a couple fries in that ketchup. All right, it's time to try some desserts. Let's do this one first. I've been looking forward to this for hours. Coconut cream pie. Got my trusty spoon. Get a little bit of that whipped cream. Some of that pie pudding. Put. Put. He caught Pie. Put. <laughs> this is the best night of my life. <laughs> oh, princess. You are really off your game more than usual today with things. It actually has um, like shredded coconut in it. I was thinking it was gonna be just like a flavored um, coconut cream, smooth, but this one has bits of coconut throughout. Okay, I think we can just skip past the rest of the dessert portion as we all know he isn't going to say anything overtly intelligent or worthwhile. All right, guys, we are all done here at Bucky's. Baby all done. Baby all done. Baby all done. Baby all done. The largest gas station in the world. Pretty much every food item I really liked. Shocker. Princess Kendall loves 97% of the food eaten on this channel. Even when it is not good, somehow it is still a go out and get it now. I wouldn't trust him for advice on food, as even toddlers have a much firmer grasp on what is or isn't good food. If you ever come down to Texas and you're driving along, you're renting a car, you're visiting somebody, you're going to an event, you see a Bucky's, slam on the brakes, make a detour, get into the Bucky's and try some of these amazing foods that I got to experience for myself and then you guys can try. If you want to look like Ken Domic, all you have to do is pound back a dozen Molson's and gorge yourself on gas station food and highly processed crap. Maybe if you're lucky, you'll make it to your 60th birthday. Ken is looking out for your health and well-being, don't you know? He wants to start a health channel, but he is just too lazy, according to him. All right, guys, if you love these videos of me driving around the States and Canada, trying out all these really cool places. Oh, yeah, everyone. Gas stations and truck stops are so damn cool. That is where all the people in the know congregate. All the teens just swarm to Bucky's on a Friday night to chillax and hang out. Meanwhile, Ken Domic just loiters around outside of truck stop showers and gas station bathrooms filming people illegally. Just for you and just for you. If I had to guess, it seems Ken might just be a bit of Give me a thumbs up, ding, 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 ding. But if you're still hungry, even after that, check out this phenomenal playlist. Phenomenally phenomenal. This is the content Princess Kendall has been sulking over not being able to make the past few months due to the pandemic. This is about as entertaining as watching grass grow or paint dry. Ken seems to be under the impression that it is break the internet type quality. Sorry to burst your bubble, Ken, but your gas station and truck stop videos are not even close to Kim Kardashian's ass. Well, not in a break the internet sort of way. It might be comparable to Kim's leaked sex tape, as your videos and she sort of just lay there like dead fish. They make about as much sense as Kanye West does. That means they make no sense whatsoever. One of Ken's minions, or perhaps even Princess Kendall himself, said that his channel is thriving now thanks to our channels. I thought that was amusing. The fact that we're supposedly responsible for his current success rather than him actually proves our point. <laughs> his viewers say we are the successful part and Ken is not. That is like if the KDCC all said Ken is the reason my channel is such a booming success. Ken is merely the focal point. 
but he isn't witty enough to do a reaction. There has been a slight uptick in subscribers. I'm not sure if that is due to some of the KDCC following my pleas or urging to get a couple friends to possibly subscribe to the channel, but regardless, I am thankful for anything and everything anyone does to help. Hopefully by September, we might see the channel approved for the partnership program, which would be phenomenally phenomenal. Thanks for watching another Ken Domic Dissemination Expose. But until next time, KDDE out. And I'll see you over there. Get your hunger on.